Right. Welcome okay. to MazeCast. This is episode number 253. I'm Diane Heaton. Uh, it's been so long since the last episode that my name and gender changed in the meantime. I'm joined tonight by Sarah. Hello. Lucia. Hey. And Lewis. Oh. Who's over there. Sorry, come back to me later. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start things off with a classic segment that I like to call Gazing into the Abyss, in which we review recent comments on the site intotheabyss.net for the benefit of listeners who might not be keeping up with the latest in May's Abyss commenting. There's a lot of interesting stuff that happens here, and we like to keep people informed. So the main thing that happened is, since the last episode, all the puzzle points have been removed from the website. I'm, I'm not really sure why. Uh, Sarah, can you explain this? Um, yeah, I'll try. I mean, I, as best as I can. So a while ago, White Raven announced that um, he had intended the, the gamification of Mazed to last only 45 months. And after that time, he was going to take down all the points and just turn it into a forum where... Um, and at that time, it seemed like he wasn't even really going to be moderating the comments or the solutions. Um, but now, based on his recent comments, it seems like he will still be doing that to a certain extent. He's calling them curated comments now, like the solutions that are up are curated by him. Hmm. Um, but he has removed, he's removed the points. So nobody's going to get any points any longer. We're not going to be keeping track of how complete or incomplete a room is based on his reckoning. Yeah, so 45 months, that's because Maze is 45 rooms. Right. Yeah, I, I don't think I realized that connection before. Oh. That you yeah. said just now. Yeah. Yeah, that's the idea. So as of September 13th, we're going to have one more hint on September 1st which will run till September 12th, and then something undetermined but exciting, we hope, is happening on the 13th. Um, and then after that, it's going to switch to the new format. Yeah. You know, after the puzzle points were brought down, there were some comments, basically outpourings of support for White Raven and all that he's done for the Maze community. I I think it's pretty clear that he's done a lot for the Maze community. Without him and his site, MazeCast probably wouldn't exist. Yeah, and I mean, we've talked about that a lot um, in various different MazeCasts, but it was, you know, it was nice for everyone to have a chance to say thanks again for that because it has been an unexpected source of fun and friendship for a lot of us. Yes. Uh, another thing that happened on Abyss Comments recently was... Uh, a theory proposed by our own Vincent, actually, that in room 8, the row of teeth above one of the doors is there because teeth row is an anagram of 2-3. Now, this is over the unmarked door, which would lead to room 23, if I remember correctly. Exactly, yeah, which is pretty interesting because I think it's the only, if it's, there's not a lot of pointers to unmarked doors. Right. So they, they all match up, but yeah, that hasn't really been used in anything that we knew of. Right. And this does fit with the sort of number spelling anagrams that we've seen with F hour tree, which is a big sort source of excitement for the Maze Cast community when that came out. Yeah, that was huge. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also kind of dovetails with the recent Ask Manson, where Manson seemed to indicate that the odd one, in principle, was a lot more pervasive than maybe we thought. Right, um, and, and speaking a lot of Ask Manson, there have been, there's been a lot of recent activity on that, on Into the Abyss, yeah. with uh, one recent question that was proposed there was basically asking for confirmation of, of the long-time accepted wisdom about what the official solution to the riddle of the path was. Right. And all that spelling out shoulders in awkward ways that nobody likes. 
whether that's actually true. Our, our sources about that being the official solution are oddly imprecise. It's hard to get an actual quote pinned down from anyone. It would be nice to get some sort of confirmation. Yeah, it was interesting because we actually got in touch with John Bailey lately yes. um, to ask him about that letter, which spells out all, all the details of the past. And we thought that it was a letter that he had received from Manson saying, yes, this is basically correct. But he said, no, 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 that was not for me. Um, he said, oh, I remember someone who was posting with me at that time having received a letter from Manson. It's very fuzzy. It seems like something we thought was completely rock solid is now this this ephemeral thing that um, we have no real proof of. Personally, I hope it's completely wrong because <laughs> I never liked that. Completely <laughs> wrong. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And <laughs> let's see. The other thing I have on my list of notable abyss comments is uh, that White Raven proposed a theory about room thirty-three, which is that. There are three musical instruments in that room. Uh, one is only one of them you would be able to actually play if you were standing in the room. That's the bugle thing, because the drum is just a picture on a sign instead of a real drum, and the violin doesn't have a bow, so you wouldn't be able to play it. And White Raven's theory is that the principle for this room is that you should go through doors that have musical instruments you should play. I'm... I don't know if that's exactly... <laughs> well, and there's, yeah. there's not three instruments, there's five, right? Because there's two flutes on 35. That, that's right, but, but that's also a picture, so you can't play it either. Yeah, but that kind of ruins like the three instruments, door three kind of thing. Yeah. Actually, that's true, and when he posted that handy phrase to as definitely being about three things, one of which was picked out. I mean, when I saw that V, the first thing I thought was that it was like a uh, sort of like Las Vegas style light up letter. But then I heard someone say that it was flutes. Yeah, there's a Greek style flute that looks like that, that you kind of play. There's two flutes coming out like that. But it's weird because there's lines between. I always actually thought it was like a lyre or something. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I think that might just be, like, cross-hatched shadows. Yeah, I think so. It's, it's, I think with Manson's art style, with the really cool cross-hatching, it's sometimes hard to pick out details at a very fine scale. I still like my thing, where the bugle is an angel's instrument and the fiddle is a devil's instrument. Um, take the bugle! You've got, like, the, the sweet chariot swinging low above the door, and I'll pick. Okay. <laughs> L down below. L there. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot going on in the abyss, actually. Yeah, it has. Mm -hmm. And I think we've covered all of it. Okay. <laughs> What's next? Uh, next, we're going to... So, Lucia is new to May's cast. I believe this is her first episode, is that right? Yeah. Sure. I just so... sort of stumbled into the... Google chat like two weeks ago, I think. Maybe one week ago. Yeah. How did how did you come across it? Um well Googling uh Maze like I think last year I came across the Abyss and I was like, No, this <laughs> is too much. <laughs> but then then um I don't remember it. why, but something like just made me want to give it a second chance this summer. I got back into <laughs> puzzles in general and I realized that I still had this book from when I was, like, seven. Oh, so, yeah, wow. I've been having a good time. So you had your original book still? Yeah. That's cool. It was pretty um, untouched, and then I immediately spilled some oatmeal on it. <laughs> <laughs> now it's legit. Yep. And how did you find the Google chat? Or the, yeah, the Hangout? Um, I don't know. I think I was on the Abyss, and then I somehow found MazeCast, and then... I found the MazeCast website, and then I found the chat, and then I was like, oh, no, I'm in here. It's too late now. Got you now. Uh, it's funny because Alex just added that as a pretty recent feature, I think, just to have a, to have a public uh, hangout that anyone can join. It's so, just 
total luck. It's like I felt like it was like falling backwards through saloon swinging doors. That's exactly what it was like. That's cool. Ah, you're here. Yeah. Uh, and you were telling us that you have been sort of binge watching the Maze Cast. Can you tell us a bit about that experience? Uh, it's very strange because a lot of time passes in between episodes and a lot of things happen in between episodes. Um, but yeah, it's been a really good way to catch up on everything that's happened recently. It's interesting. So, so the episodes are watchable then? <laughs> Mostly. Okay. Mostly. I've had to skip through some parts and skip a couple of episodes, but... I, I don't tend to watch them myself. No, I mean, why would you? <laughs> I've watched them all, Marcia. <laughs> it's just, it's, um, it's been a really good way to learn a bunch of stuff about what's sort of in the community canon very quickly. Well, yeah, and it's interesting because I think what the Maze cast crew considers canon might be different from what is considered official canon on the Abyss, and of course, even amongst ourselves, we disagree violently on many things. <laughs> um, but that's what makes it fun. Yeah. Um, that's you, what discussion is like. Oh, for sure. Um, so you told us in the public chat uh, that you were familiar with uh, heavy farm machinery. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, I am from Maine. Uh, and every job that I've ever had has been a farm job. Basically, um, from blueberries to goats to vegetable gardens. Um, and what I've been doing the past two summers is uh, doing this internship with the local university uh, in sustainable agriculture. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's cool. So what do you see yourself doing? Um, going off to college this year for <laughs> oh, um, journalism and environmental science. Oh, that's amazing. Yep. Love it. Um, okay, that's a great. Is there anything else that, that you could tell us about yourself? Um, not what really. What puzzles do you like other than maze? Obviously, you like puzzles. Um, I love doing those sort of lateral thinking puzzles where, like, one person knows the answer to a riddle and you sort of have to ask them questions to figure out the answer. Those are really fun. I like to do those with my friends and my aunts. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what else uh, about what Maze history. About? I could tell you um, this was like a segment that I liked was the Maze history thing. Okay. Um, I like saw it in a catalog when I was seven, and it had the book cover like this, and then it had a big bronze key next to it, and oh. I really liked the way the key looks. And I was like, Dad, you have to get me this book because it has a cool key next to it. <laughs> and that's basically how I got it. That's and we got absolutely nowhere, but what I thought was funny with your recent guide discussions was how um, you're, like, really working on figuring out who the guide is, and that's, like, the one thing that my dad and I actually did sort of think about and sort of got somewhere with was thinking that the guide is the Minotaur. But we didn't figure out the path or anything else, really. That's cool. So you got there. I was actually, that was one of the questions I was going to ask you was, in your opinion, who is the guide? So are you still, is your feeling still like the Minotaur? I mean, it seems really strong, but then I was like staring at room 13 and I was sort of coming up with another theory, which I don't know if I want to present yet because it's not really very complete. But um, if you look at 13, there's like, it's really bright down here, and then it sort of fades up. I made, um, I photoshopped an image of this yesterday. Um, that is like, it's, can I screen share something? I, I think so. I think you can. Yeah. How do I do it? Uh, it's like a green button on the top left. A yeah. green button. Move your cursor over to the left, it should appear. Yeah, I might hide by default. Okay. How oh, you got? Um, so I made this. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah cool. It's um, or I have this theory. I was looking at the director's chair and all of the references to time, and I was thinking about, like, direction, like stage direction, because these rooms really look like they're going up diagonally. Do you think that? 
Yeah, well, and there's certainly a lot of references to theater and the stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, throughout mm -hmm. Maze. So I was trying to do something with that, and, like, um, cut time was what I originally thought, was because of directors saying cut and all of the references to time. But I'm not sure where I want to go with this, except for the other Shakespeare reference in 45 and the other theater rooms. I haven't really tied it together besides that. That's really cool, and I think that's something that there's obviously a, a lot of theater references throughout the book, and I don't think anyone has come up with a really great reason for why that is. Yeah, it's not just things like Room 26. There's stuff like the prop trees in doorways, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Things that look like theater scenery. Yeah, that's really interesting. I hope you keep working. Yeah, last night I went through and, like, made a little map of all of the theater rooms um, and all of the rooms that have a similar tilt, which actually turns out to be 38 out of 45 in my opinion, which is pretty high. And then I was thinking about Shakespeare again, like All the World's a Stage, and uh, like Atlas, you bear it upon your shoulders, the house that we all live in, the world. Right? Yeah. Does this, yeah, does this have any bearing? Does, does this hold any water? Yeah, and I think, in fact, there's another quote from uh, Hamlet, which is interesting about the world being, I don't know, was it a, a prison with many rooms or something like that that also seems kind of relevant? Um, so, yeah. I know there's, I could be bounded in a nutshell and counted a king of infinite space. Hmm. Hamlet. I haven't the entirety of Hamlet memorized, if you ever need me to quote it. Oh. Right. <laughs> really? <laughs> pretty much. That's pretty great. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So, there you go. We've already come up with, a, like, three different references that could relate to Maze and Hamlet. Yeah, I'm going to keep working on that, because I, I like it a lot. And I think there's... I don't know if it's intentional, but I think you could create something out of it. Well, that's a lot of the fun of Maze, right? Is seeing where it takes you whether or not it was intended. <laughs> That's cool. Um, I was actually going to ask you if you have a pet theory about maze, but you have already anticipated that question and answered it. Um, if you were able to meet Christopher Manson, what question would you most like to answer, ask him? I don't know. I'm not... Like, there's well, nothing you luck. could... You're probably not going to meet him. <laughs> there's there's nothing I like there's nothing I could think of that wouldn't be on the Ask Manson page. Right. And there's nothing I would want to ask him besides like straightforward stuff like who is the guide? Mm -hmm. What is what's what is this in this room? Stuff like that. Um and I I think that's sort of like White Raven's theory that like being told directly isn't very fun. It's not very satisfying. Right. Well, yeah. and it would certainly be more satisfying if we could figure out the answers ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, and you yeah. know, Vincent and others have said that part of the reason Maze is so successful and has been so absorbing for so many for so long is that we don't know all the answers and Manson is not telling us. He's just keeping it a mystery and Mystery is, is what's keeping us here. That maybe if maze were more fairly solvable, nobody would be interested in it at this point. Well, yeah, I mean, it would all be solved and people would have moved on. I mean, the drawings are still really good, I think. Oh, for sure. I was looking at the, the original Bruegel's drawing of Orson, and I was just having a good time with that and looking at how similar and fun it was to Manson's style. Yeah, it's pretty neat, eh? And then the things that he chose to do differently, like the feet. Mm. Like, why are they why are they there in room, uh, what is it, 16? And uh, I think he's wearing shoes or something in the, in the rules. I like that thing that Alex came up with, too, with the, the Bosch painting about the, the jug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was interesting. Funny. That is a very maddening object. That object and the machine are... Well, you should talk about your, your theory about that machine, actually. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yeah, so... Any idea for what that could be? Um, I had heard some people saying that the object in 16, the machine is, like, totally unrecognizable as anything. 
And then I just thought, like, what do you mean? This is a winnower because um, in Maine, blueberry farming is very much a thing, and winnowers are how you clean blueberries. Um, and you just, like, put them in a feeder like that, and they go on a belt. And it looks very similar to that most of the time. So that was my theory for that, was that it's a winnower. And uh, once I read the description of the Valentine Orson story, I thought it was similar to, like, cleaning off the wilderness from a crop and turning it into something clean that can come to the city. Yeah, I like that. I think it could be that this room in general has sort of a winnowing theme. Yeah. I think that's a really neat idea. Oh, do you have any additional questions for Lucia? Uh, I think we've I think you've pretty much covered that there. That's awesome. Well, I'm sure we will learn much more about Lucia in the days and months to come. And, and our next segment is... The Maze Cast. <laughs> yeah. Our next segment is the Random Room Challenge, oh, where we pick a room at random and try to solve it on the spot. Okay. So, so far, we haven't done that very well. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, do you want to uh, screen share some random number generating thing? Yes, I'm going to do that. I'm just calling it up right now. So I can share it. Okay. Get my book ready. You know what? A lot of thunder over here. I don't know if you guys can hear it through the video call. No. Yikes. Middle of the storm. Okay, can you guys see that? Yeah, it's number 10. Yeah, but we're going to do it live. All right. So everyone can be feel the excitement. Okay, okay. ready? Here we go. Ready. 36. All right. Oh, no. That's a good one. Okay. The Plant and Rio Room. Yeah, now I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to call that up as well. Just see. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Computer is incredibly slow. Um, yeah, the plangent beer room. Um, All right, I'm I'm looking at what's known about the sun into the abyss, and it looks like nothing. <laughs> you think? Oh wait, uh, so it's things like the players' masks represent tragedy and comedy. Comedy is next to the correct door. Tragedy next to the incorrect door. Right. So that's, I guess because comedy is good writing and tragedy is bad writing, so you should go no, with the good it's writing. No, that tragedy is something you want to avoid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Typically. Um, somehow I can't call it up. Anyway, open up your book of maze and look at it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. It's this room. You, you, you guys all know this room. Yeah, everyone knows this room. It's the one with the musician. Yeah, by the Room 30 song, right? Talks about them kind of right. pretentiously. <laughs> yeah, this room is interesting. Um, and now another thing that we know about this room from Into the Abyss is that there are a whole bunch of stones scattered on the ground, and if you pick out three particular stones, then there are three of them. <laughs> now... To be fair, this that's is not one of the rooms that is supposed to have a truffle in it. Gosh, that's so true. <laughs> to be fair, it is not. Well, uh, I um, immediately notice, even though I thought I had uh, looked at this room a lot already, is that uh, the comedy guy is wearing tartan pants and the tragedy mm -hmm. guy is wearing one of those French striped shirts. So maybe, like, something about Scotland and France could be gotten out of that? Oh, my goodness. That is a new observation. I because like you that. can see that the tragedy guy is just wearing normal black pants. I like that. <laughs> That's I weird. don't know. I always come up with these things that I think are cool, and then they don't go anywhere. Hang on a sec. Let's see, this is why we need new people. <laughs> Um, hang on a sec. Okay. All right, so maybe the solution here is that you should go to Scotland instead of France. Mm, but why? Yeah, actually, 
Actually, this is a loop room. We might not be looking for a solution that points to a particular door. Yes, Diane's theory is that the loop rooms in general do not have solutions at all. Is that right? Am I representing well, that right? Sort of. My, I think it's possible that there are loop rooms that don't have puzzles in them at all. I, but another option is that there could be puzzles that are not aimed at presenting you with the door that you should go through, that there could be other things, like the turn back message. Right. Like that loop rooms could have puzzles where the solution is just some phrase telling you, oh, you went the wrong way, you're in the loop now. Right. Can you get, or, you know, can you get out of the loop? The loop terminology is not you, from Manson. You can get out of the loop, but you have to get back to room 41. Huh. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that it makes sense, but at the same time, I think there are enough rooms that have solutions that I think are pretty decent in the loop, that I feel like there are some rooms where it is telling you which way to go. And I do cling to that room 35 idea. I think that's really fun. Um, I also had a theory in this room, which I'm just going to present because <laughs> I have the opportunity now. Huh. That, so, okay, so number seven, that is the seventh note, right? Which is also T, T I, right? On the scale, do re mi, do re mi fa su la T. And I counted the number of T I's in the text on this page, and there are seven of them. So, there you go. <laughs> but even when you didn't like that one. <laughs> I know, I thought it was pretty good, and I checked all the other pages, and, you know, none of them had 17. Diane's struggling not to say something rude. <laughs> yeah, remember when we extracted that song from the text on this page? Yes. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Which? How did we do that again? I can't even remember the principle. Oh, we found all it the... Was, uh, <laughs> we took all the do, re, mi, and so on that right. occurred in the page text and just played those notes in that order, and it sounded terrible. Yes, and if anyone would like to listen to it, they can go uh, to Di Diane's Maze Facts on MazeCast and one of the blog posts yeah, we, can, we can put a link to it in the the notes below this video once it's up on YouTube. Good idea. Um, that was really fun. I think that was one of the incidences where you think of an idea for a solution and it would be like, it would be so amazing if it were true. You just really yeah. want it to be real. Imagine if we had played some recognizable song, which I have no idea how that would have gotten you to step. It would have been bonkers. It would have been bonkers. But it didn't happen. <laughs> Did not happen. Um, any other thoughts about this room? Yeah, now that I look at it, I was counting the stones, mm -hmm. and the guy with the vial is standing up, actually. Uh, he's dead. Well, so he's not on a stone, is what you're he's saying? Not, he's not sitting down. He's like, yeah. yeah. Okay, so what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> That's funny, though, because I always thought he was sitting. I never thought of him. Really like leaning against the wall? There's I think he's got his, uh, here. his left foot is propped up, so he's got, like, a knee to lean the instrument against. Hmm. But, I mean, if you look at the height difference between the two guys, I think he's probably standing. Yeah. Is, is that a normal way to play a viol? I'm not really sure. I mean, I it doesn't... I don't know a lot about string instruments, but it looks like a cello to me. The, yeah, viol the guide calls it a viol, and I, mm. I trust the guide implicitly about everything. <laughs> and it does. I've, I've looked this up, and it, 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 it does look like a vial. 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 That's the pronunciation as well at one point. Vial. Um. It's an instrument that's not very common, but it does. Uh, that there's several different kinds. Hmm. Now, if we had not listeners who play that instrument, maybe you can write in and let us know if that's a normal way for somebody to stand or sit while playing it. <laughs> I do like in this room the solution where it, it looks like that rock is going to fall on you just over the door to 16. No, it's not. Which rock? It totally is. 
There's a stone, the one that where the light's hitting it, right over 16. And uh, yeah, I see, right over the 6. Yeah. That, that doesn't look like it's going to fall. That's fine. It does. It's got, like, the little shaded part. It looks and like it's pulled It's out. got one corner over the edge. Yeah, the, the majority of that stone is on the ledge. Okay, but the... the center of gravity is way back there. You know, what could happen is Top Hat could come along the top of that archway there and kick it and kill us. Yeah, yeah there could be someone back there. I mean, it looks like there's some kind of a platform there. It's definitely a trap. <laughs> but, I mean, it's funny because this is one of the rooms where it really matters very little what door you choose because you're just in that little triangle of 7, 16, 36 anyway, so you're not going to get into trouble. Yeah, and, and that's why I think that there wouldn't have been that much reason for Manson to put a puzzle indicating a door here. I mean, unless aesthetically he had decided he was going to do that in every room. Yeah, there's also... So if he was going to do an odd one-in puzzle, though, that would be hard, because with just two choices, you can't really do odd one-in very well. Right. Well, I was thinking about that the other day. Um, so maybe that's... Maybe that's a general principle, where we have only two doors, odd one in doesn't work, so the puzzle has to be pointing to the right door, or right. somehow indicating that there's something bad about the wrong door. Are, are there any rooms along the path where you only have two doors to choose from? Oh man, good question. We need Vince to tell us this instantly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know, actually. I don't think there is. So if there isn't, then that's some evidence for odd one in being a general thing along the path, right? Since it's a reason that he would have wanted to avoid there being path rooms with just two doors. That's kind of interesting. That's an interesting observation, though, isn't it? That, yep, that there are no... Yeah, and that's assuming that there aren't any like that. I don't know offhand. I don't think so. I don't think there is. And that kind of makes sense based on puzzle construction, too, right? Because when you're along the path, he would want to give you lots of opportunities to go wrong. Right. <laughs> well, I feel like we've learned a lot. Are we looking at the text? Um, we can, if anything comes to you. He, he, the guy does talk about himself, which is always interesting. Mm-hmm. As I was just going through it, um, I was looking at the certain plangent brio to an otherwise introspective composition. <laughs> Odd phrase to drop in there. No, so I just um, had a little dictionary search of that, and plangent brio is a reverberating sort of vivacity. So I guess um, vivacity literally means li like lively. Mm -hmm. And if seven is like the slightly better option, then um, I guess it's the more lively option since the guitarist is there. Well, he's overplaying his part, though. No, but he's adding the lively part to the otherwise introspective, introspective as in going around the loop. Mm. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think the main problem with this room is that there's a lot of things that seem like they could point to either door or mean either thing. Like, exactly what you've just said, he's, he's dissing the playing of one, but then saying, oh, but it adds this important, yeah. this important element, so I don't know. I mean, I guess any puzzle elements would be in these rooms to just keep the player thinking that they're they're still active, like they're still playing an active role. Right. Yeah, I mean, if Diane is, is right, that there aren't a lot of actual door indicators in the loop, then, but you still have to seem like they were, there were, otherwise you would know you'd gone off the path. Right. Manson definitely doesn't want the path rooms to be so obviously distinct that you can flip through the book and see which rooms are going to be on the winning path. Yeah. All right, anything else about this room? 
All right, I think that was an above average random room challenge. I agree. So what do we have planned next? Ah, we're going to do an installment of My Favorite Room. And Lucia, as newcomer to MazeCast, we would like to hear what your favorite room is. Now let me let's tell her what this thing is first. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> okay, so the rules for this how does it work again? So like she presents and then we complain? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically a simulation of what happens in the hangout. <laughs> <laughs> hangout simulation inside the hangout. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I don't have a favorite room per se, but um, while I'm talking again, let me shoehorn some more Shakespeare theory into this. So, um, room 17, uh, as I was going through all of the rooms last night to look for tilts uh, in the doorways, room 17 is the only room that has a door with a tilt drawn downwards, uh, which is the doorway into 45. And I thought that was super interesting that room 17 would be the only one. You can kind of see it in 6 and 33 as well, that this would be the only one drawn that way. What do you mean by a downward tilt? Uh, you can see that the cross hatching is darkest uh, at the beginning of the doorway and slowly lightens, giving it sort of a downhill effect. Oh. Ooh. So... Yeah. Um, in comparison to the uphill ones, like in 13 that I was saying earlier, uh, I guess you'd be going downstage finally towards the audience instead of away back into the shadows. Right. That's interesting. It does have that unusual lit up doorway which, which doesn't appear anywhere else either. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, for, room 45 is not that bright, and it even has, um, based on the direction of the shadows, the light is coming from somewhere in the ceiling. Uh, if you want to pick a room to tear apart, I can, I can find one for you, probably. Okay, pick a favorite, how about? Um, what's the one with the blind statue? I like that one. Oh, 27. 27. That's a good one. All right, tell us why you like it. Uh, I like the figure. I like the hole. <laughs> and uh, I like the, the card theme, the playing card theme. All right, Diane, what do you have to say about this room? The the card theme has never really held together well for me. There's so there's the two suits at the tops of the doorways, the spade and the heart. And people have tried to find other allusions to card suits in this room. For instance, there's the baseball bat, which you could kind of think of as a club. There's a small shovel by one doorway. You could kind of you could call that a spade. There's there's no diamond in here that I know of, unless somebody's proposed something really weird. Oh, yeah, on the doors. The doors. Oh, right, no. right. The, yeah. yeah the really tiny things that could be diamonds, could be diamond-shaped. Or also the shape of the, the door like this and the whole slope going like this. Hey, that's a big stretch. Wait, which slope? Uh, just the, the apex of the door forming the top of the diamond and then the slope of the digging forming the bottom. Yeah. That's not that's not great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I mean maybe there's maybe you could get something out of two spades, like the extra S newspapers. Yeah, I, having two things that could be spades there I don't think we really have any theories worked out about what that could mean? It feels kind of inelegant to me, like possibly not even intended. Like it seems like Manson threw in those card suit symbols at the top and 
might not even have thought about how that shovel could play into that. Baseball bat bugs me because if you were going to put a club in there, you could make something much more club-like than that. Or... Oh, Lewis is back. Yay! Lewis, are you with us? I should be. Great. Uh, open up your book to page 27 and complain about it. <laughs> I don't have my book available. Uh, I want to uh, complain well, about Well, just it remember too. page 27? No. <laughs> it's the one with that statue with the plaque that says uh, Fata Viam Invenient. I'm going to share it. I'm going to share it. That's a good call. Here we go. I've heard There's... people say that the figure is the hermit from Tarot. Yeah, although no tarot card of the hermit looks anything like this. No, I completely disagree with that. Because I drew all the tarot cards earlier in the summer, before I, w I was back in the maze. and a big it, project. It, how many of them looked like this statue? None of them, because he's wearing <laughs> very Roman attire, which usually the tarot cards aren't. Right. He's got some. He's either got a blindfold on or glowing eyes, which is just strange. Yeah. And he's stuck to a rock, and his, he's dropped his lantern. It's just a mess. So there was a whole there was a whole controversy about this a while ago. There was a hint regarding this room. This was, I think, the first hint. It might have been the first one. Was it? Um, and there was a yeah. firestorm generated by that theory that it was uh, the hermit, but not the hermit, uh, because of all the non-hermity things that you've mentioned. Um, and that therefore you shouldn't trust it, um, and should instead take door thirteen. So I, I don't mean, know. Who, have who a even came up with that? Um, who thought of that? It it doesn't bear enough resemblance. The I only would think that's similar is the lantern. I will say I like this theory, and I like it because of a the lantern, b the number nine, which is the number of the hermit Trump. Um, yeah, I think that was one of the The fact that there the is a card theme in the May in this room. Anyway, I'm kind of on board with this hermit idea, but even though it doesn't look like the hermit, it has enough elements to tell you that it's the hermit. I, but then it has. But, but if Manson had wanted to represent the hermit with a figure in this page, he could have drawn a figure that actually did that. But Diane, that would be too easy. <laughs> um, so, so, there's, I, when I joined, you were talking about how there's no diamond or club in the room? Uh, no, the, the baseball bat is, according to some people, a club. But it doesn't look like the club, the suit club, does it? It's like a yeah. pun, it's like a visual pun. Another theory about why the baseball bat is in here is that it's next to the picture of a cat, and cat and bat rhyme. <laughs> Which means... Hooray. Uh, <laughs> this is not a theory that gets to the point of meaning anything. Well, well if you're from um, my area, or Massachusetts, uh, the heart can be pronounced hat, which is <laughs> kind of rhyme. <laughs> this is good. Regional information. Yeah, and we, we don't know all that much about Manson's regional background because I'm not bothering to check his Wikipedia page right now. Can we deduce what picture should be over the shovel from analogy to the cat picture being over the bat? And <laughs> What's that called when you do that? Like, this is to this as this is to this? Analogy. Analogies, yeah. Okay, so it could be something that rhymes with shovel, like hovel or... That might be it. Hovel. Um, okay, so you should something. do that more because that leads you to uh, run down home. <laughs> um, well, lots of things rhyme with spade, don't they? Yeah. Spade. Paid. If you go to the spade, that's where you go to get paid. Okay, so what animal rhymes with spade? So there's this issue that you can't actually go through that door, though. That's a one-way door that you would come here through. That's fine. I just want to know what animal rhymes with spade. 
Mm. Um, I can't think of one. The internet would probably have the answer. See, because because then it could be that the heart and and this the heart and spade up there are to clue you that it's a spade, not a shovel. Right. Mm. Right. So that you know what rhyme to look for for the picture. Right. Well, that's tempting. And then, and then look, the shadow is pointing at where the picture would be. Maybe it's spade okay. evade, and you're, that's to tell you because the spade is pointing at nine, so you should evasive when it comes to nine. Mm. Or maybe the most disappointing thing for me about this room is just that there's so much that seems to be there, but we have not been able to find something really cohesive that is satisfying about all these all these symbols that are familiar and feel like they should come together in a meaningful way. Maybe we should take a break to look at a satisfying solution to a room. Oh, right, so that's a good segue. segue. <laughs> okay. That's right. Uh, Lewis wanted to present. His solution to which room was it, Lewis? I don't know. Was it room 43? Yes. All right. Okay. So, so this yeah. this room is very confusing. How can you possibly make sense of it? Um, I don't know if this helps with anything about navigating the room, but here's here's what I think is going on in this room, and it is the most confident I am about anything except for the solution to room one, which I figured out on my own and was proud of myself about. <laughs> and then I got to whichever room that takes you to and I couldn't figure it out because it doesn't make any freaking sense. <laughs> That's the room with the devil and the moon and stuff, right? Yes, 26. Uh, why is the very second room so difficult? <laughs> well, they're all equally difficult after that. So you see that there's two urns on the ground labeled your and self. Um, and, uh, and we notice that uh, there's something in between them, and then we start thinking Rebus style, so we think, ah, there's something in yourself. What is that thing? It looks like a bell of some sort, um, and I, I think of it like the end of a horn, and I think the text on the page maybe even references something from another page that maybe you could pretend is a horn, like a trombone or something. But anyway, the end of a horn instrument is called a bell, uh, and, and it looks like the bell is leaving the room. So uh, next to it we have peak on a card, but I think it's a known solution or something to this room. I, for some reason everybody knows you're allowed to just reverse the, the, the order of the words, the letters on the keep and the trap. Well, well the reason for that is that <laughs> those, those two signs are words that, when spelled backwards, make other words. Yeah. So, so maybe that's something. So if you reverse uh, peak, <laughs> uh, and you think of that horn as a bell that's leaving, um, and it's in yourself, then uh, what you have is a rebus for keep believing in yourself, uh, which is a nice little optimistic note from Manson to the reader in the middle of uh, room 43. Which is a little bit dark, really, because you can't get out of here. <laughs> And also, you shouldn't keep believing in yourself because you are the guide and thus you are the villain of the story. I don't actually know if that's true. I don't remember. Any no, that, that's like, not exactly the case. I think it is exactly the case. Well, I had so this thought... My guide like, theories later. Um, <laughs> what if the guide is not evil, but the visitors are, and the guide is doing the world a service by dumping them into the abyss? Ooh. Well, in that case, you shouldn't keep believing in yourself. <laughs> Unless you are the guide. Unless you're the guide. It's a, it's well, a nice... Guess is you, the reader, in the prologue, right? Um, I think you're forgetting that the prologue is not the same text as the, as the book. <laughs> That's interesting, though, to think of the visitors as being the baddies. Wait, sorry, we've become distracted from my obviously correct oh. reader. Sorry, Lewis. Sorry. Um, it's, it's a good rebus. It is a good rebus. Of all the things that I have seen in this, like, what is going on with that horn or whatever bell that's in, in the doorway there? No idea. What's the text on this page? 
So this room is very important, actually, Lewis, because it it's supposed uh, to be the end room of the guide puzzle. Allegedly. So according to White Raven's uh, guide puzzle, which he has had confirmed by Manson... Allegedly. Um, we do not know that. Okay, well... So White Manson has said at uh, White Manson... <laughs> <laughs> I think you mean Charles Manson. White Raven has said that Manson has confirmed the solution. Um, and the guide trail... Uh, Manson has confirmed his solution for who the guide is. Right. Well, no, he also said that uh, he confirmed some, the particulars of it. He what what particulars? Is well, it the I am in no. Sly thing and it says the Sly face? Yeah, this is the sly yeah. hole in the trefoil path, and it ends up here, and apparently there is something in this room that definitively tells us who the guide is. Yeah, so, so Lewis, the connection here is if you go to the title page of the book where it says, Maze, solve the world's most challenging puzzle, there's a picture there that has a little scroll with a maze drawn on it, and in the walls of that maze there are letters hidden in there that spell out the word sly, and this room has the word sly in its text. Therefore, this room is where you go to solve the puzzle of who the guide is. Um, does, does any, uh, where, where the, wait, sorry, where does it say sly? Uh, in the, you see the image Sarah has up right now? Yes. Uh, look inside that square angle thing. Yeah. You see a little S in the maze? Yes. Right to the left of that, there's an L, and okay. above that L, there's a Y. There's also an N in there. Yes. That's N. Yeah, that's the N part. Yeah, and there's also a, a straight line somewhere, which could be an I. So the message here, according to some, is in sly. So you look in the room that has the word sly in it which is room 43. What about that, like, pseudo-R? We don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> or the G, or the U. <laughs> anyway. But the sly thing does look a lot more obvious and intentional than the G thing and such. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty clearly he was yeah, put his own there. And... I think Manson did try to write sly there. Yeah. Um... Okay, what's the text on room 43? A great hall, dominated by the entrance to room 22. The face over the door had a sly look. Is it good or bad to have only two choices, they wanted to know. It was, predictably enough, neither good nor bad. These people just didn't know how to phrase a meaningful question. You have to be very particular in this house. We went on to... Uh, the devil tarot card has the devil with two people on either side of him, just hmm. like that guy up there does. Yeah, Vince pointed that one out as well. And also in room 38, um, there's sort of a, a devil tarot card looking thing going on too. Room 38? Oh, in the kind of rough carving? Yeah. Yeah. Obviously it's rough. But that doesn't fit with the... Wait, is this a Herod room? No. Oh, God, we're not going there. <laughs> we don't have time. <laughs> Keep believing in yourself. Like... Yeah, it's I, I no mean, plausible it's explanation. Pretty good. I just don't know why that phrase would be in here. It's what's going on the T-shirts anyway. <laughs> what I am in sly. No, keep believing in yourself. Oh. <laughs> That's our maze motto. <laughs> maze cat. <laughs> that does seem to be how most maze theorists operate. That's how I operate. Yeah. Self-confidence. <laughs> Best kind. Yep. Can, can it be on the t-shirt attributed to Christopher Manson? <laughs> yes. As <laughs> discovered by Lewis. No, I don't want credit. 
Oh, okay. You did that just tell that. Makes it sound like it's not obviously just like straightforwardly in the text. Right. <laughs> okay. Man, this t-shirt is getting crowded. Yeah, we haven't. Nowhere else in the book does does Manson or the guide or anyone give you a message of encouragement. It must be unique. Is this the first step on the path to destruction? No, this is the end of the line, really. I mean, you're in the trap, you can't get out. You're kind of far from room 24, but... Yeah, as the sign saying part suggests, you're in the trap. Um, this room is kind of interesting, too, because no one else seemed excited about this when I mentioned it before, but the 38 is not actually inside the room. The number 38? Oh, yeah. That's the only time it, you ever get a room number that is not actually inside the room. Wait, can you show the picture again? Yeah. Hang on. Wait. Can anyone think of any other plausible rebus that could be going on with the... Is there any, is there any no. story that explains what's going on with the yourself urns? Um, so the, the theory that is on the abyss, or the solution that's on the abyss, is... I mean, my solution's on the abyss. It is. It is. I think I had a puzzle point for it. Very... No, you didn't. I'm pretty sure I did. I, although it's... In the comments on the abyss, it's not in the curated solution summary chosen by White Raven. Whatever. <laughs> now, uh, the solution up there says that the phrase is keep yourself apart in that yourself is separate on two, do on two stars and also there's part after that. This doesn't make that much sense. What? No, that doesn't because there's no reason to do peak backwards but not part. Why would that be uh, well, this was independently proposed by White Raven, Sarah, and Barry. What, apparently, why? Why would that be? Like, remember how you asked why it would say "keep believing in yourself"? Yeah, right. this doesn't make sense either. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm not saying that this is a better I'm solution. It. I'm saying that it made it into the curated solution summary. Right. This is Wait, so, Lewis, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I feel like that might be because one of the people who proposed it was White Raven. Well, that's how the game works. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's what we call rigged. So if you read the room from left to right like you would English, <laughs> Lewis, your solution is keep believing in yourself trap. Oh. Oh, maybe believing in yourself is a trap. You should doubt yourself. Or give up. Yeah, the message is that giving up is how you solve maze. Well, it's actually a pretty good instruction for this room. Yeah. you can't get out, so you might as well give up and start again. I, mean, I, I don't know that the problem you face in this room is that you're believing in yourself too much. <laughs> well, it is if you just keep wandering around the trap forever. <laughs> There's kind of a limit to how much you can do that. Eventually, there just isn't anywhere new to go. Yeah. Yep. Perhaps the bell slash sounding bell slash phonograph flute in the doorway suggests filling in a word between the jars, a part. That part of the solution is credited just to White Raven. <laughs> so, so yeah, I I still don't get how keep believing in yourself fits into anything, but I think it is clearly the best solution that has been proposed for this room so far. Yay! <laughs> you get a maze cast point, Lewis. Uh, yeah, that that's some of the highest praise I've ever given to a solution. It really is, actually. <laughs> We call those uh, Vance Watley official maze points. <laughs> uh, where are we in the agenda, Diane? Uh, let's see, we've gone a bit out of order here. I think the only segment we have left is uh, Book Recommendation Corner. Ooh. 
where we're going to recommend the book Idofusicon by Jack Masters. Now, Sarah, I think you were the one who suggested adding this to our book recommendation lists. Um, well, it was your suggestion, but I thought it was a great suggestion. Um, I agree wholeheartedly with it. This is a book that has come to our attention recently, um, and I blogged about it uh, on May's Cast, so you can read my blog there. Um, it's a really unusual book, and I think it will really appeal to anybody who likes Maze. Um, yeah, it's, it's sort of a, a different type of puzzle book, really. Yeah. Like, it has puzzles in it, explicit puzzles that the characters and the reader get presented with. But even beyond that, it's kind of puzzly in that you, in just in trying to work out what's going on with the plot and the characters, there's some neat puzzles to that. And and it was explicitly inspired by Mays. I believe that was an influence on the author. Yeah, um, and especially the third section, um, there's, so it's in three parts, and the third part, it almost reads, it almost reads like Mays fan fiction. It's sort of an alternate, strange, skewed version of Mays. Um, yeah, the, the third part is the most puzzle book type section of it. So yeah. You start reading it and you get confused about why we suggested this thing that doesn't even have mazes or crosswords or anything. Keep reading. <laughs> yeah, there are solvable puzzles and we, we put one of them uh, on the blog for people to have a look at. Um, but that's, you know, that's not the only reason to read this book. Yeah, it's a pretty fun read. Yeah, it's really intriguing, and it's sort of like Maze in that you feel like you kind of have to read it a few times because there's a lot to figure out, there's a lot there, you get the sense that there's a lot of hidden references. Um, yeah, it's pretty engrossing. Yeah, Hydrofusicon, check it out. All right, now Lewis is uh, muted. I don't think I've done that. I think he probably muted himself. Okay. Oh, he's unmute now. Did you do that? I did, but Whoa. you can unmute people. Sorry. Okay, I did. I I remuted you. <laughs> I don't. I, I can't unmute him. I guess you know this is because I started the hangout. Right. Okay, Lewis. I have no idea if you're muted or unmuted. I'm unmuted. I unmuted myself. Sarah has all the power, apparently. <laughs> apparently, I love it. <laughs> Um, okay. Right, so, Lewis, would you like to deliver the official closing remarks? Sure. Uh, um, keep believing in yourself. <laughs> keep yourself apart. <laughs> That's a trap. All right. Trapper keeper. <gasps> Wait. <laughs> Did that, that's been proposed. Wait, has it? Really? Yeah. It, <laughs> The problem is it doesn't really go anywhere. Does Maze predate or postdate Trapper Keepers? Because I know there have been... I don't even remember. I know there have been solutions proposed that postdate <laughs> Manson's writing of the book. Those well, are my favorite. Those are my favorite solutions, which assume that Manson is a Nostradamus <laughs> less good at being clear. All right, well, I failed to stop the broadcast with those closing remarks. Does anyone else have any closing remarks? Um, well, I think Lucia and her inaugural newscast should get some closing remarks. Uh, I, I did not prepare a speech. Um, <laughs> I'd like to thank the Academy. I'd like to thank uh, Winnowers. Uh, and I'd like to thank... Uh, all of you for being such a lovely community. Aww. Aww. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. And to those of you watching at home, we've been MazeCast. We're the room, you're the door, time to walk through. <laughs>